it's not a fad, it's not a trend, nothing. I've just always loved records. I love looking for them, um, and I love the way they sound. I love um, the amount of care that goes into keeping them. Um, they're, they're all just things that help me sort of honor the music, which, which um, you know, I was, I, I, I've said it once before, and I thought about it again recently, that, you know, if you think of music as, as, a, <laughs> as a chart, you know, your whole circle is 100%. I think only half of that is the music itself, and the other half are the experiences in your life that have brought that music to you. And only with both of those you have this 100%. Um, and I don't feel that other side in the digital world. I... I you know, I can pull out, I got, I got a lot of records here, and I can, it might take me a second, but I can probably remember where I got each one of them. And I can remember the people that were involved with teaching me about it, or the people that sold it to me, the places I got it. Um, and then I can remember, like, anything that I've done with, with the work that I've done that has put these things back into the world. And... Uh, and that's a really valuable, that makes the object really valuable to me. Um, and I'm not against digital music. This is just what I know. This is what I like. And it's also what I started on. Um, you know, I started working at a record store when I was really young, and a lot of my coworkers who were older than me just put me off of anything else. They're like, just buy records. Um, and I mean, I, I, I have zero CDs. <laughs> Uh, I'd always just, I'd upload them, put it in a bag. When the bag filled, I'd trade the bag. I, I've just never responded to it. And digital, I think, I think it's very valuable for research. And I, I have, you know, hard drives and hard drives full of digital music. But I'd also be fine if it was all gone tomorrow. But if all my records were gone tomorrow, I, I would disappear. <laughs> I think it, it works better than digital because I think it's easier to kind of assign feelings to an object versus assigning it to like thin air um, and CDs versus records that's just a coolness thing like like CDs are so dorky <laughs> uh, you know I, I, I can speak of this uh, from a DJ perspective too like I only play records I still mix records and um, and I am totally aware that it's because of these records that I've gotten to travel the world. And, and uh, like I said, I can't assign that feeling to a CD. Like, CDs have just gotten me through, like, car rides. <laughs> they haven't taken me to, like, crazy countries with crazy people. Like, like, the records do that. It's the thing I started with, and I got lucky that that's the thing that also sounds best. Um, you know, I, I didn't go back to vinyl. I didn't, you know, it, it, it's what I always had. And as my interest in sound systems and, and hi-fi gear uh, crept in, which is new. That's, I'm, 30, I'm about to be 37. I got my first pair of good speakers when I was 30, um, which is insane to me because now it's like my life. <laughs> So, you know, as I started to upgrade my systems and work more and more on my gear, it just made the records that I've always had and always loved even better. And I don't think you can really say that about other formats. Um, I also, I love permanence, too. That's, that's a big theme in my life. I like things that are, that started great, will always be great, and will end great. Um, I, I quote, I, I say this quote all the time, might as well say it here. Uh, this dude, Theo Parrish, is a DJ I love. Um, he said once that he's not comfortable trading artistry for convenience. And that hits me so hard. And all I see in the digital world is convenience. Um, and and I'm, I, too, am not comfortable with that. I'm interested in anything that puts people in record stores. So... I mean, we've also, we were talking earlier, we've, we've now been doing this long enough to see the vinyl resurgence happen like four times in the past 10 years. Uh, it's, just an, it's just a news story. People need to write stuff 
to keep their publications alive. Like, they're, I, I feel like half this story is just created. Um, but I, I do think that there is a raised awareness in it, yeah, because it's never been easier to find great records. Uh, there's so many also great gear manufacturers that are working with entry-level products. Um, it's a good time to get into this stuff. But it's also very dangerous because I, I think a lot of labels aren't doing it well. And that's kind of, you get into this danger of a bubble bursting. Like if you build up this story, everybody shows up to the store, they buy these things, they get them home, and it doesn't sound the way it's supposed to. It's not a heightened experience. And then you've got a person who gives up on this new thing. So what could quickly follow the vinyl as backstory is the nobody cares about vinyl anymore. But if you do it correctly and you get new people to the record stores, you sell them reissues and new records that have excellent quality control, they'll be hooked for life. I mean, that's, that's my favorite thing in the world to do is to play people the real thing for the first time. Um, and I mean, there, there's never been a session like that where I don't get an email from that person the next day being like, how do I get this at home? Um, it just takes some careful curation and there's a lot of busters out there. <laughs> There, there are some rare records that are showing up now where the master tapes don't exist. And if that is the situation, I've heard some convincing restored needle drops. Um, I would prefer that to not happen, but if it's the only way this thing can come out, go for it. Um, but just don't cut from digital. <laughs> Done. You know, nobody, nobody wants CDs on vinyl. Uh, and, and also, you know, and I, I think about this a lot. If you can go to Amoeba and find a record for $5 used, don't reissue that. <laughs> Please don't. It, you know, this, this stuff is only helpful when you're giving people who don't otherwise have access access to this music. Um, and I, I hate to say it, like most of my record digging now is at specialized shops with dealers and online because I'm bummed out to go through most stores bins to just see these kind of $30 versions of a dollar bin record, you know? <laughs> so yeah, quality control, so important. Your source is so important and your curation is so important. Take that and run. <laughs> In this house, there's about 10,000. Um, but I'm also very uh, careful about what I keep. Um, I kind of have like a spring cleaning every, every year where I just get rid of anything if I don't know why I have it. Um, I'm totally aware at the thin line a record collector walks between this and being just a hoarder. So I, I care a lot about condition too. I, when you have gear at this level, you need clean records. So I'm careful about what I buy, I'm careful about what I file. Um, but I mean, I've, I've sold or traded just thousands and thousands of records. Uh, but I, fe I feel better if I can pull anything off this wall and know why I have it.